Hey everyone, Gene here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into the Java multi-threading world, specifically the Fork Join Framework. This is a powerful tool for leveraging the power of multi-core processors and achieving significant performance boosts in your applications. You'll be amazed at how much faster your code can run with this technique. This is also part 10 of my Java multi-threading series, so if you missed the previous one on atomic variables, make sure to check it out in the Java Advanced playlist. The Fork Join Framework is designed to tackle complex tasks by breaking them down into smaller, more manageable subtasks. These subtasks are then executed concurrently, allowing your program to utilize CPU cores efficiently. Think of it like this. Imagine you have a huge jigsaw puzzle. Instead of assembling it piece by piece yourself, you could divide the puzzle into smaller sections and have a team of people work on each section simultaneously. That's essentially what the Fork Join Framework does. Imagine cutting your processing time into half or even more. At its core, the framework utilizes a fork join pool, which manages a pool of worker threads. These threads grab tasks from a shared queue, execute them and return the results. This work stealing mechanism ensures efficient utilization of all the processing power. To illustrate the power of fork join, let's look at a practical example, matrix multiplication. We'll implement a version without multi-threading and then compare it to a version that utilizes the fork join framework. This example is very close to an example I found in a book about Java concurrency. I'll place a link to it in the description of this video. Okay, so it's time for the matrix multiplication example. So let's create a new class, implementing runnable, which also brings us to override the run method, which is where all the work is going to be done. What we also need to define is a matrix class. So let's do that, matrix.java. And here we start by defining a two-dimensional integer array, private final int the two brackets and we name it matrix. Then we define ourselves a constructor, public matrix, in which we define the size of the array by placing a quantity of rows and a quantity of columns. And then we need two getters, one for columns and one for rows. We also need a possibility to retrieve a value from the array. So let's also create a get value method, which gives us the possibility to ask for a certain value in the array based on row and column. We also need the counterpart, which is setting the value, taking the row, the column, and the value to set. Let's also create a dump method for converting everything in the array into a readable way. All right, let's go back to the run method and define ourselves a first matrix. So matrix A, new matrix, has two rows and three columns, and then we set values here and there. After having done so, we put our dump method to use to see what matrix A looks like. Let's also create a matrix B, essentially doing the same thing, filling a couple of values and dumping the matrix B. All right, matrix C is the result of the multiplication of matrix A and matrix B. For the multiplication of matrix A and B, we create a new method, multiply, which first checks if there is a mismatch of rows between matrix A and matrix B. And if this is the case, we throw a new illegal argument exception. And if not, we define ourselves a result matrix where the rows have the size of the rows of matrix A and the columns have the size of the, of the matrix B columns. What we need now is a set of three for loops to essentially walk through all the cells for calculating the result. After having done that, we return the result, which is the multiplied matrix. And now being back in the run method, we can dump matrix C. All right, let's go back to the main method and create a new instance of matrix multiplication example and run it. And here we can see the first matrix, then underneath the second matrix, and then underneath that, the resulting matrix after the multiplication. Regarding the fork join framework, you won't believe the performance difference. You'll see firsthand how this framework can dramatically improve the execution speed of your matrix multiplication. The code discussed in this video is also available on GitHub. You can find a link to the repository in the description of this video. Okay, now let's take care of the matrix multiplication fork join example. For that, we create a class of the same name, implementing runnable, which also brings us to override the run method. Now let's just copy the two matrices we defined before, matrix A and matrix B. But the thing that's a bit different this time is how we calculate the matrix C by making use of fork join. For that, we define ourselves a new fork join pool, which we also want to invoke. And for the calculation itself, we define ourselves a new class matrix multiplication fork join, extending the recursive action class. Here we define ourselves three matrices, A, B, and C. 
What we also need are two constructors, one taking the three matrices and another one taking the three matrices and a row value. The first thing that we want to do here is check if the rows and columns mismatch and if not we set the values that we just got. Now the big thing here is the compute method. The first thing we want to check here is if we are the row minus one, which would mean that we entered by one of the constructors. If so, we create a list of tasks of the type of this class with a new instance of ArrayList. And now for creating all those tasks based on rows, we create ourselves a for loop which starts at row zero and runs to the quantity of rows of matrix A. And in every iteration, we create a new instance of this class, but with a new row. After having finished the for loop, we invoke all the tasks. Now we also need a method for multiplying the rows and columns. So let's create a new private method multiply row by column, taking the three matrices and the current row. And what we do here is the essential multiplication, which is called when the row is not minus one. All right, and that's already it. Now let's go back to the main method and create a new instance of matrix multiplication folk join example and run it. And here you can see essentially the same output as in the example before. But this time we calculated it using multi-threading, specifically fork join. The fork join framework is a valuable asset in your Java multi-threading toolkit. By understanding and effectively utilizing this framework, you can significantly enhance the performance of your applications. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to this channel to stay updated on the next video, where we will explore the fascinating world of completion services. Thanks for watching and happy coding.